John McCain doesn't want the kind of change that allows the government to reach even deeper into your paycheck and pick your pocket, your doctor, your child's school, or even the kind of car you drive, or tell you how much you have to inflate your tires. <laughs> and he doesn't want to change the definition of marriage. And unlike the Democratic ticket, Senator McCain and Governor Palin believe that every human life has intrinsic worth and value from the moment of conception. And speaking of Governor Palin, I am so tired of hearing about her lack of experience. I want to tell you folks something. She got more votes running for mayor of Wasilla, Alaska than Joe Biden got running for president of the United States. McCain is by far the most prepared, the most experienced, and truly the most tested presidential candidate. He is thoroughly tested. When John McCain received his country's call to service, he did not hesitate, and he did not choose the easy path. He sat alone in the cockpit, taking off from an aircraft carrier to fly in the unfriendly skies, knowing that there was a good chance he might not make it back. And one day, he didn't make it back. He was shot down and captured, brutally tortured. He could have eased his own pain, even cut short his imprisonment, just by uttering a few simple words renouncing his country. But then, as now, John McCain put his country first, and he knew he knew that to return with honor later was better than to return without it now. Most of us, most of us can lift our arms high in the air so that we can signify when we want something. He can't even lift his arms to his shoulder, which is a constant reminder that his life is marked not by what he's wanting to receive, but rather by what he has already given. Let me tell you about someone I know who understands this type of sacrifice. On the first day of school in 2005, Martha Cothran, a teacher at the Joe T. Robinson High School in Little Rock, was determined that her students would not take their education or their privileges as an American for granted. And with the principal of her school's permission, she removed all of the desks from her classroom on that first day of school in 2005. Now, the students walked into an empty classroom and they said, Ms. Cothran, where's our desk? She said, you get a desk in my classroom when you tell me how you earn it. Well, some of them said, making good grades. She said, well, you ought to make good grades in my class, but that won't earn you a desk. Another student said, I guess we get a desk when we behave. Martha said, you will behave in my classroom, <laughs> but that won't get you a desk either. No one in first period guessed right. Same for second period. By lunch, the buzz was all over the campus. Ms. Cothran had flipped out, wouldn't let her students have a desk. Kids started using their cell phones. They called their parents, and by early afternoon, all four of the local network TV affiliates had camera crews out of the school to report on this teacher who wouldn't let her students have a desk unless they could tell her how to earn it. By the final period, no one had guessed correctly. 
So the students filed in. Martha said, well, I didn't think you would figure it out, so I'm going to tell you. And with that, she went to the door of her classroom and motioned, and in walked over 20 veterans, some of them still wearing the uniforms from days gone by, every one of them carrying a school desk. And as they carefully and quietly arranged those desks in neat rows, Martha said, you don't have to earn your desk, because these guys, they already did. These brave veterans had gone halfway around the world, giving up their education, interrupting their careers and families, so that we could have the freedom that we have. Martha told them, no one charged you for your desk, but it wasn't really free. These guys bought it for you. And I hope you never, ever forget it. And I wish, ladies and gentlemen, I wish we would all remember that being American is not just about the freedom we have, it is about those who gave it to us. And let me remind you of something. John McCain is one of those people who helped buy the freedom and the school desk that we had. John McCain helped me have a school desk. And I want to tell you, I pledge myself to doing everything I can to help him earn a desk, and I'm thinking the one that's in the Oval Office would fit him very, very well. Thank you. God bless you, folks.